Sunday and I am excited. I just came from church and we are going to talk about the actuarial journey. So basically what I'm going to say in this video is probably like, you know, global. It's something that every actuarial system in um, different countries are like following. So feel free to ask any questions, but also feel free to like share your knowledge on how the journey is depending on where you are starting to be an actuary. So yeah, first thing first, your degree doesn't qualify you to be an actuary. It takes more than just obtaining your degree, whether it's your bachelor's degree or whether it's your master's, it takes more than that. So most of the times I have professors or even just people, friends, family members asking, so what are your plans after graduation? Um, I've had a professor ask me my plans after graduation and he was just basically um, advising me to go to grad school and I'm like, well my professional exams are going to be my grad school so yeah your degree is not enough to qualify you to be an actuary and the reason why is because of the professional exams so the professional exams um are really they are a huge journey in the actuarial profession and that's because you spend a lot of time taking these exams studying these exams um, and just to also like getting through them. So if you meet any other actuary out there and um, you tell them you're an, you're an actuarial student, one, the first question they'll ask you is, how many exams have you passed? And that's because the exams are vital in the actuarial profession. First thing first, um, in the American uh, system, when you finish your college, you can be employed as a full-time candidate at any company, whether it's an insurance company, investment bank, whatever. So like when you get employed as a full-time candidate, um, you are called an actuarial analyst or an actuarial student. That's because you are not a qualified actuary yet. And so most companies have actuarial programs and in these programs, they basically support their actuarial employees to, success, to succeed and actually be qualified. So how the process works is that when you are doing your undergrad degree, you can take as many exams as you want. Well, most of the time they don't recommend that you take like more than three or four. And that's because um, they also want the exams to be complemented by your experience and when you are going to school as a full-time student you are unlikely to have a huge experience and so um as a student like i managed to pass two exams but then i plan to write my third one next year and that's because um when i'm employed as a full-time um candidate um next year in whatever actual student program of the company i'll be working for i'll be continuing to pursue my professional exams there are a lot depending on which road you are taking to as well um so personally i probably still have like seven or eight left so it is a journey and it requires a lot of commitment and dedication so yeah um so when you are employed as a full-time after your college or after your university, after you pursue your bachelor's degree, um, the companies, are they start supporting you in your journey to become an actuary. So they like, for example, they do exam reimbursements, um, they invest in your resources, so your studying resources, and you get paid time off. So you get certain number of hours depending on the company. The companies have different policies when it comes to that. So like you get paid time off. So you get hours to study. Um, and that's because they also understand how like demanding this journey is. So they kind of try to give you enough time to prepare yourself and make sure that you pass. Um, thirdly, um, I've also noticed that some companies, when you pass your exam on first attempt, you get a bonus. Um, and when you pass your exam, even if it's not on a first attempt, you get some sort of um, uh, salary raise as well. So your exams also contribute a lot to how your compensation package is. So the more exams you pass, the more opportunities you have of like promotion and salary increment as well. Um, one major thing is that um, 
especially in insurance companies um actuaries also tend to be good leaders or they tend to be leaders or in really higher positions and that's because um taking these exams once you you know you get your designation and your fellowship it's literally like you pursued your phd you pursued your phd but while pursuing your phd you also have really valuable experience so that's why most companies if you find actually or maybe their president their ceo vice president or director of something it's normally like someone who's also an actuary so yes the actuarial journey is more than your bachelor's degree or your master's and definitely with the exams it's it's really interesting it's everyone's journey is unique and different i've met actuaries that maybe took 13 years 10 years to actually complete their overall fellowship or to uh, attain their fellowship i've also met actuaries that you know maybe just took four years after graduation to achieve their fellowship so they've just been cruising through the exams and um they pass them another thing is that as you go further the number of times an exam is offered in a year kind of decreases so for example the first two exams are offered six times a year and then my the third one it's like three times a year and as you go further you have some exams that are maybe offered once a year so that means also if you fail then you need to wait another year for you to rewrite that exam so yes that's that's the reason why most of the times it takes long for people to achieve their fellowship because you know it's a lot of perseverance it's a lot of like character building and it's a lot of just you know consumption of resources and giving your time and all of that yeah um recently i had my mentor talk to me about something that i ne never really thought of but i'm glad that he talked to me about this and it was about how i'm navigating my personal goals around my professional goals so being a female actuary may be a bit different from the male actuaries not that you know just the aspect of if for example if you want to start a family and you want to raise a family and all of that i think with females we all know we have to go through the biological process of being pregnant and you know nursing and all of that even though your partner or you know the father figure of your kids is gonna be there and support you throughout i think we can all agree that it's a bit different for women going through nine months of pregnancy can maybe delay you of um your efficiency or effectiveness of taking this exam so then that may delay the process i mean it's not impossible it's doable there are actuaries doing that but it all depends on your professional or your career goals and how you are willing to navigate that around your personal goals and so most of them do encourage for you to just get through get through with the exams as soon as possible or as fast as possible so after graduation keep taking your exam do your best keep getting good experience have a good working environment and a support system and try to cruise through the exams as soon as possible so the better you do that the better it is for you as well because it becomes less daunting it feels like you have given your time to achieve something and then now you are kind of like settling down to put in other goals or other things that you need to pursue um so yeah and also with that i want to also talk about something so about grad school taking your professional exams is literally you going to grad school and then another thing is that once you are done with your fellowship whether that's four years after graduation whether that's seven years after graduation after you have cleared all the actuarial exams and you are a qualified actuary and uh, most of the times so you're probably really doing well in your career as well so like at work you're probably having like a senior position or something like that and so most people what they do is then they do that phd on something related to actuarial science some people do data analytics some people do mathematics statistical applications all of that so yeah you can definitely still pursue your post um grad um goals if you want to after you gain um your fellowship but one thing for sure 
you need to be at a specific level for you to be considered accredited actuary or a qualified actuary and yes um it's doable it's a long journey but it is definitely worth it and if you love it it will be easy for you to just keep pursuing and keep going and you know doing the best you can so yeah thank you guys for coming to my channel again um feel free to ask me any questions i'm always here and i love talking about actual science as always so yeah love you guys